All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys today, a positive story, an update on Raphael Brandau's health situation. As you guys know, and we talked about in the last video, Raphael Brandau was hospitalized after contracting dengue fever from a mosquito bite. And like I mentioned in that last video, this is a virus that is sometimes fatal in as much as 5% of the patients that get it. But fortunately, today, Raphael Brandout was discharged from the hospital. He spent five days in there in total, but apparently the hospital said that he has recovered enough now where he can continue his treatment and recovery from home. So he's not completely out of the woods yet, but he's healthy enough and recovered enough that he was able to be discharged discharged from the hospital and go home so very good news for Raphael Brandau hopefully he can get back on track um, to pursuing his bodybuilding career but we do still know that he's going to miss that Pittsburgh pro guest posing coming up here this weekend now next up in the news the latest update from Hunter Labrada at both 13 and 15 weeks out from Tampa and Texas pro shows respectively weighing in at 277.6 pounds now, he says they've made a pretty aggressive pullback on food over the last three days, and I think that's because he's got the Pittsburgh Pro guest posing coming up this weekend, where he's going to have to be next to Nick Walker. He's going to have to be next to Big Rami, and he got a lot of criticism after that, less, that last guest posing, rather, at the Emerald Cup, where he was posing next to a guy known as Beef Stew, who's a relatively newer IFBB pro that's not as uh, experienced and highly placed as Hunter has been, and a lot of people were saying that Beef Stew outshined him at that guest pose despite the fact that he was just a couple of weeks out and Hunter, like I said here, is 13 and 15 weeks out. So much uh, much more room for him to sharpen up for his show than Beef Stew, who's competing in like a week and a half. But that's right, that Pittsburgh Pro is this weekend. So I think that's the main reason why. And I do think that Hunter looks tighter here. He looks sharper. His midsection, that was the main thing that I noticed with the with the Emerald Cup guest posing was his midsection looked a little bit weird. It does look tighter here, but I, you can still see in that lower ab area, a little bit of distension. So I'm curious to see how he looks on stage. The Pittsburgh Pro, always one of the most exciting guest posings of the year. This year seems to be no exception. And I'm, I'm curious to see how Hunter looks in this mix with Nick Walker, Derek Lunsford, Big Rami, no Raphael Brandau, Samson Dowda, Sean Clarita. I believe Sean Clarita is doing the guest posing as well. Um, Chris Bumstead will be there, but he's not doing guest posing. So it'll be interesting. Let me know how you guys think Hunter will stack up because we've got a little bit of a preview here. So we did get a picture from Samson and Dowda today um, after a guest posing that he did in Poland. So Samson is another guy, like I just said, we're going to be seeing on that stage. And what we know about Samson is that he's huge in the offseason, 313, 315 pounds, really big guy. And what I'm curious to see is him next to big Rami on this stage. Because I think Rami, his stage weight was, I think, still a little bit higher than Samson. I think Samson was closer to 290, while big Rami was over 300 pounds on stage. But in the past, we had this 336-pound Samson Dowda in the offseason. And Rami is known for these crazy 300-plus pound offseason weights. So it'll be interesting to see a semi-off-season 300-plus pound Samson Dowda next to Big Rami, where Samson is closer to Rami in weight. And we have two guys on this stage over 300 pounds. And I think that, to me, will be the most interesting and I think exciting comparison of that Pittsburgh Pro. I'm looking forward to seeing Rami next to Samson with, you know, this 315-pound version of Samson and however much Rami weighs at this point, probably around 320. We're probably not going to see a fully blown out, like, 330-pound Rami yet. I, I, would, I would guess he's around 320. So they're going to be a lot closer in size, both over 300 pounds. That's going to be the interesting part about this guest posing to me. All right, guys, I'm happy to announce that today's video is sponsored by Medical Breakthrough Saunas. I generally would never do a sponsored post on a video where the compensation was just a free product. But I had been in the market for a sauna for so long and I would wanted to add one to my home gym so badly that I was extremely excited for this integration. So full disclosure, they did give me this sauna. Now this is a two person infrared sauna. You can get one, there will be a link in the description box below and you can use code NSP200. But look, legitimately, I use this thing for an hour a day, every single day since the day that I got it. It's great for stress relief. It has anti-aging benefits. It's good for your skin. But the main reason that I wanted it was there's lots of studies that show people that use a sauna daily 
have a marked decrease in all-cause mortality and specifically relating to cardiovascular sudden mortality, sudden death from like a heart attack or a stroke if you use a sauna daily. So when the pandemic began, I started to build a home gym. I have this home gym in my basement that you're looking at here with the sauna in it. And I've also got more equipment out in the, out in the garage, a squat rack, some you know free weights and stuff. And I was gonna put the sauna out there to save space, but I had to put it inside. It's worth the space that it takes up because I want to get straight out of bed sometimes and get in the sauna because it's it's a great way to kind of decompress or right before bed, get in the sauna, then get straight in the shower. I had to have it in the house because I use it so much. So you can use the link in the description box below to get a sauna, whatever size you need, one person, six person. They've got Bluetooth speakers. They've got LED lights, infrared technology, easy to assemble. It took me less than an hour. Use code NSP200, link in the description box below. But next up in the news, Nathan Diasha. He did an interview with Muscular Development. A lot of people are waiting to see Nathan take the stage again after taking pretty much the entire year last year off of competing. And he talks a lot about Samson in that interview because Nathan is one of the guys that has beat Samson on multiple occasions and has beaten him recently, about a year ago. The most recent of which being the Arnold Classic UK where he narrowly beat Samson down. So you got Samson getting all this attention right now. Samson is doing really well. And Nathan is probably watching that as a guy that's like, man, that's great for Samson. He looks great, but I know I can beat him. I only took a year off and people are already writing me off and talking about Samson as the next up and comer. I think Nathan wants to come back and make a statement in a major way. So he said in this interview, he is shooting for the 2023 Mr. Olympia. He, he wants to qualify for that show. He says he's looking at Spain, Italy, and maybe France. So I'm assuming he's not talking about the show in Spain in June based on the shape that we saw him in just a few weeks ago, because that is June 18th, um, the show that Michael Crizzo is doing. But a little bit later on, you've got the Big Man Pro Show in Spain, which is the very end of July. But that still seems kind of early. You've got another show in Spain, which is going to be uh, the Europa Pro, which Nathan already won, which is also an Emilio Martinez show. Um, then right after that in France, you've got the Shiru Classic France, which is likely what he's talking about there um, as being the France show. But the week prior to that, you've got the IFBB Pro League Flex Weekend Pro in Milan, Italy. So this is these are all September shows. September 9th is the uh, Milan, Italy show. September 17th is the Alicante Spain European Pro Championships. And then the uh, France show is in 2023. And that European show... The, the uh, European Pro Championships is the one that Good Vito is doing. So Nathan could do what he did a year ago and potentially win three shows. And he said he's looking to take those qualifying spots from other competitors and really make a statement. And that's what he did last time around. He won like three shows in a season and, you know, he took those spots. So I'm looking forward to seeing a Nathan Diasha come back. I think he's got a little bit of a chip on his shoulder because people kind of are looking past him because he's been gone for a year. I know he got a lot of pushback on that physique update. That really seemed like he got a lot of negativity for that one. You guys can see that on screen here. And then like I mentioned earlier, he's got to be looking at what's going on with Samson Dowda right now. All the hype that Samson's getting. People are literally already saying they think Samson could be a future Mr. Olympia. He's got to be looking at that and saying... I've beaten Samson all these occasions, and I don't think Samson's ever beaten Nathan, although he almost beat him at that Arnold Classic UK. That was a very close victory uh, for Nathan. But I would imagine Nathan is looking at the Samson down to hype and thinking to himself, I've beat this guy repeatedly, and people are talking about him being the next Mr. Olympia. What about me? So I hope Nathan is able to win those shows, get to the Olympia, and we get to see him do battle with Samson Dowda on stage again and see if this time the outcome will be different now that Samson is really coming into his own. Now, next up in the news, we did also get another very impressive physique update from none other than Keon Pearson um, preparing to take the stage again a little bit later on this summer, trying to qualify for the 2023 Mr. Olympia in 212, where he's looking to improve upon his first call-out sixth-place placing this year. But man, Keon really seems to be doing everything right. His improvements are significantly noticeable. He looks significantly bigger. He looks significantly fuller. You can see the added density in his back in this posing update. All while keeping the small waist. All while still being able to hit a vacuum pose. As you can see here in this update that he posted two days ago. Now I'm definitely biased when I say this because I'm a huge fan of Keon's physique. I really think he can win the 212 Mr. Olympia. He, to me, is the kind of physique that I would like to see win that title. To me, he resembles a Derek Lunsford. 
He just needs to have Derek Lunsford level conditioning and bring up his uh, his lower body a little bit. But in this video, it looks like he does that. He's got pretty good size in his legs. You can see the, the separation in his hamstrings. I'm very impressed by Keon. And he's not just resting on his laurels here with the fact that he's got these really good genetics. He's got this great structure, very classically flowing physique. You can tell he's putting in the work to put on size and really fill out a 212 Mr. Olympia type of frame. But let me know what you guys think about Keon's latest physique update in the comments down below and his chances at the 212 Mr. Olympia title. Now, next up in the news, Nick Walker. We were just talking about this Pittsburgh Pro guest posing, which is this weekend. And we also got a little bit of a preview from Nick as well. Now, this was a couple days ago. But since we talked about Hunter and since we talked about um, Raphael and showed a little sneak peek of Samson, I wanted to show this really quick posing clip of Nick looking really a lot fuller a lot rounder, a lot more carved up than we saw him at the Arnold Classic, which is why this is going to be an interesting guest posing to see all these guys next to each other because that was the main criticism of Nick at the Arnold was that while his conditioning was, I think, significantly better than the Olympia, he was flatter and he lost some of that fullness that he had at the Olympia and he looked bigger at the Olympia. So he kind of flattened out. I didn't think it was a significant flattening out for the Arnold, to be honest. He was noticeably less full, but to see him next to these guys like Samson who beat him at the Arnold, in a much fuller version of Nick, which is what we're seeing in this posing video, I think that's going to be interesting, even though Nick isn't going to be on the same size level as a 315 plus pound, you know, Samson or Rami. This is a much fuller, much more difficult to deal with version of Nick. And I think that it, it'll be interesting to see side by side because the one thing that happens with Nick sometimes in the off season, his midsection becomes harder to control. He's eating more. He's more carved up. He's more full all the time. It's more of an off season look for him. And you see his midsection spill out in the off season and a lot of those posing videos and, you know, the background, you can see it in the mirror. He's hitting some back shots in that posing room. But it'll be interesting to see if an off-season version of Nick with a little bit more fullness and a little bit more size looks better or worse next to somebody like Samson that has a really good flow, V-taper, small waist. Maybe that exposes Nick even more because his midsection is going to be fuller and harder to control. Or maybe the added size and fullness makes him look that much more impressive next to Samson. It'll be interesting to see that. So that's kind of your Pittsburgh Pro um, guest posing preview. And that's going to wrap it up for the video, guys. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy it. Make sure you leave a like on the video if you did enjoy it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Make sure you get yourselves a medical breakthrough sauna if you haven't already. Code NSP200. Thank you guys again, Medical Breakthrough Saunas, for sponsoring um, this channel in today's video. And as always, I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out. All right, guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram at Nick Strength Power. My Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power. My secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, give that one a look. And all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day.